Applying glow to your paper 2D sprites can make your Unreal Engine games look amazing and much more vibrant. I'll show you an easy way to achieve this through emissive maps and how we can set it up to be able to dynamically adjust the glow color and glow strength. This will work for both 2D 3D hybrid games and 2D only games like this. By the way, you can check out my 12 hour course on how to make this 2D Mega Man like in Unreal Engine 5 from the discount link in the description. As a starting point for the demonstration, I already imported the animations for the monk and dragged the flipbook for the punch into my level. If you want to follow along, I prepared a zip file with a sprite sheet, JSON and a missive map for you. You simply need to drag the JSON file for the monk into Unreal Engine and click on generate all flipbooks. As you can see, the blue flame shown during the punch animation does not glow at this point. Let's start by making a custom material. By default, any flipbook will use the masked unlit sprite material. And to find the folder with all paper 2D materials, we can just click on this folder icon. And since I'm making a 2D 3D hybrid here, I want to use the default lit sprite material as the base. To copy this, we simply need to scroll up to our content folder and be very careful to not move it but just make a copy. So go to content, drag it here and copy here, not move here. And then we can go back to our content folder. I like to just make a new folder called materials and drag it in here and then also rename it. I'm going to call it M underscore default lit sprite. And for performance reasons and to be able to dynamically make adjustments, we want to create a material instance of this and just call it MI default lit sprite. This is the one we now have to set on our flipbook. So go to the flipbook materials and look for the MI default lit sprite. Nothing really changes yet, but once we make adjustments to this, it's gonna show on the character flipbook right away. Double click the default lit sprite material. And in here you can see some of the settings, roughness, metallic, and the source texture for our sprite, a normal map. But what we really care about is the emissive over here, emissive color. And here we want to copy this additional texture slot from the normal map, control C, control V, and drag it here. And now they're both number zero, but we need to change this one, the additional slot index to one instead. And I can also change the slot display name to emissive map. Now I can just try to drag this RGB value into the emissive color and apply. And you'll see that it is now glowing blue, which is still not what we want, but we're a step closer. By default, we want this to not glow at all and only glow if we provide a texture for it. So we can scroll down here while this is selected. And for the default texture, we want to make sure that on this cog wheel, engine content and plugin content is enabled. And we can just look for emissive. And you can see we have this default emissive, which is exactly what we need. It is just black, which has a value of zero. And now we can apply and you see that nothing is glowing by default. In case you don't have the texture available, I also packaged one in here you could use alternatively. We then also want to make sure that the coordinates are connected here to the UVs. Otherwise, it's not going to know the position of the sprite. Now we want to test the slot on a single frame of our sprite. So in the content drawer, you can just look for wherever you have the monk assets, look into the frames folder, and we want to use one of the punch. So I can just look for punch and maybe use the second one. So monk punch one. Here on the right side, you can see we have the additional texture setting. If we click here once, we have the slot zero, which is the normal map. And if I just save now, you can see that there's a problem that everything goes dark because we need to also set up here the flat normal. Uh, I think any of these are fine. So the flat normal maps from paper 2D, we can use this one and save. And now this is fine because we just had to override the default with this. And then to use the emissive map, we can press on plus again. And here, if we just save now, you can see that everything lights up. So we actually need to create the texture now to specify which parts of the sprite should light up and which shouldn't. I also prepared this texture for you in the monk folder. We have the monk underscore E and the monk underscore E necklace, which I'll talk about later. But for now, we want to use the monk underscore E. And just to quickly cover how you can create your own emissive maps, you need some sort of image editing software and I like a sprite for pixel art. And all we want to do is make the areas we want to shine white. So I can just pick a white color here and then take the fill tool and go like this over the entire flame. And then delete all of the parts that you don't want to shine. 
you can also make more minute adjustments. For example, instead of using white, which is a value of 1.0, which is a full glow, you could also use something with a V value that is lesser. So if we have something at around 50%, for example, it's only gonna shine at half the strength. And this is a good way to create some variation. You could have this middle part be not full shining and then have the outside part shine at full strength. Once the emissive map is done, we can just go to the monk folder, textures, and we want to drag it in here. And next step, we want to make sure that we apply paper to the texture settings. Otherwise, it's not going to retain that pixel art look. In the end, it's going to look something like this, where only the parts are marked that we want to glow. Now in the sprite for the punch, we can just go to the slot number one, and we can look for our monk underscore E, and apply this uh, emissive map. Save, and now we can check out how this is actually glowing properly, but only on this one frame, not on the entire flipbook. An easy way to apply this to everything is to go again to the monk folder, frames, and just hold Control and A to select everything, right click, asset actions, and go to edit selection and property matrix. Here again, we want to use Control A to select everything. And on the right side, this just gives us a bulk edit tool. So for the additional textures, you can see multiple values and we cannot add anything. First, we just want to dump everything and we want to then add two elements and you can see it's buggy because we don't see the drop down. You just have to click somewhere on another one and then again control A and now we can properly see the index zero and the index one. Again, for the index zero, we want to click this array looking icon for pick asset and look for the flat normal. Pick the one all the way at the bottom. And for this one, index one, we just want to select our monk underscore E for the emissive map. Again, if these don't show up for you, you want to make sure that the cog wheel has the show engine content and show plugin content enabled. And now just click on save. And we can see that only this part is glowing. And you can see there's some variance because I didn't paint everything with the value of one. To see this a little bit better, we can go for the directional light if you have one in your scene. And we can just turn this off and you can see it glow a little bit better. This is still not the end of it though, because we want to be able to customize the color and how bright it shines. We need to go back to the material, in my case, the content and materials folder and the M underscore default lit sprite. Here we now want to add a couple of more nodes to combine with this emissive map that we got. The first thing I want to do is multiply this. We can just drag off here, multiply like this, and then hold one on the keyboard to create a scalar parameter like this. And we then want to right click it and convert to parameter. And this basically turns into a variable we can name and change in the material instance. I want to call this glow strength and set the default value to something like 10. Now we can just drag this up here into the emissive color, apply, save. And you can see that it is shining much stronger now. We can see the entire shine here. You can see that also the floor is affected because I do have lumen on right now. In case you don't have lumen, it's not gonna affect the floor, but you can still see the nice shining here. Next, I want to set the color. So back in the material, I can again go here and multiply this. And now I wanna hold the three key for a vector three on the keyboard and left click to get this note that we had in the beginning and connect this top color here. And then again, connect the multiply to emissive color. And here I wanna right click again, convert to parameter so we can give it a name and change it dynamically. And I'm gonna call it glow color. And by default, I just want to set this to, let's say red and click on okay, apply. Now you can see that it changed the color of all the parts we marked in the emissive map. To show you what the material instance is good for, we can just go here and open the MI default lit sprite and detach the window, make it a little bit smaller and go to this screen and we can change this in real time and see what happens. Here you can now see the glow strength and the glow color which we defined and I can just go to the color and change it and you can instantly see what it's gonna look like. So this makes it very easy for you to find the perfect color, find the perfect glow value. And I kind of like the yellow, a little bit into the orange, looks really cool. Click on okay. And the same for the glow strength. We can just drag here and even go to something really crazy, which you probably don't wanna do. But yeah, just maybe like something around 20 looks rather nice. 
And this is something we cannot just control in this window, but this we can actually control in blueprints during gameplay. So you could change the color or the strength if you pick up an item, if you are low on health and things like that through gameplay. One setting that is very important in the post-processing volume, and if you don't have one in your level, you might want to add it here through the volumes, is the bloom setting. So if this is selected, we can just look for bloom. And here I have the lens, bloom, and I can see the intensity. In the case of this map, it is already set to 1.6, which looks rather nice. If I turn off Bloom, for example, you can see that it's not as bright anymore and it doesn't look as nice. But you also want to make sure to not overdo it and just crank it up. Usually something between 1 and 3 is an acceptable value. And of course, you don't just want to have a flipbook in the world. You want to actually have a character you can control. So if you already have a blueprint for the character setup, you want to make sure that on the sprite, you're also using the same MI underscore default lit sprite. And now when I'm walking around here and I do the punch animation, you can see that it is lighting up as well for this character. And you could take things even further and add a second emissive map for the necklace, for example. So we can have two different colors and two different glow strengths. The way to do this is to basically just copy paste what we made here, put it here, and then add an add node, which then connects to the emissive map. So we're basically just having two different emissive maps with two different sets of parameters. And again, this then allows us to set the color and set the glow differently for both of them. If you want to play around with this a little bit more, I also included the skeleton and the emissive maps for that one. So you can try to do this again on your own and get some more practice in. I hope you enjoyed this paper 2D tutorial and thanks to all of my patrons for making this possible.